Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video to show you how easy it is to take a model like this, which is currently iNav 5.1 up to the latest version of iNav, as I'm recording this, version 6.0. Now, I did a video a while ago, a um, couple of weeks ago now, with Darren, one of the iNav developers, and we discussed all the funky new stuff that was available in iNav 6.0. The two things that I'm particularly excited about is they have fixed the horizon drift for the majority of cases, and they've added much better support for HD systems. And in the nose of this thing, I have installed one of the Walksnow Avatar 1S boards. So this is now a little HD flyer. I also do want to make sure that I'm not going to fall foul of that horizon drift that some pilots have had. I think I've had it probably once in my entire iNav career. So in this video, I'm going to go through the whole process, show you the steps. If you're on iNav 5.0 or 5.1, it's relatively easy. It goes through the entire steps that is needed in the documentation. If you're on an older version, personally, I would do a diff all, save that to a file, and then just make it so that you only have your modes in there and your OSD layout, and kind of set everything else up from scratch. Personally, I just like it that way, so I don't inherit any bad settings that I've done historically, because over time, you get better and better at your iNav setup. So I set up iNav now in a subtly different way than I did five, six years ago. So I would do it that way. But for iNav 5.1, iNav 5.0, the upgrade is super simple. So let me show you all the steps. I won't cut anything out. I might speed up a couple of things, but I'll show you every single step I've done to get this onto iNav 6. So the first thing we need to do is to get that diff all file from the model in its existing state. Now this is on 5.1, so you have to use the same version of configurator, otherwise it won't show you all the tabs like this. If you're ever trying this and it doesn't work, then just go into the CLI and type version. It will always show you the version of the code that it's running, which will allow you to download and use the right configurator. Now I'm going to do two things here. First of all, I'm going to take a dump of the configuration. That is more for a backup in case I don't like the way that the new iNav flies. I can keep it safe for reference. I would also, while you're in here, take a look at all the different tabs, things like your modes, your OSD, your configuration, and just remind yourself of how everything is done. Just going to save that dump file somewhere safe. Probably never look at it again, but it's handy to have. The one that we need, if we clear the output, is the diff all. Now, this diff all is the one that we're going to use to take all of our settings across to iNav 6.0. So I'm going to save that and put that somewhere safe. Now we've got the diff all, we can download the configurator for version 6.0. And what we're going to do is follow the steps that is laid out in the documentation. Again, if you're 5.0 or 5.1, we'll use a tool that we'll look at in a moment that's going to do all the hard work for us. If you're coming from a previous version, I would just copy across things like your OSD and your modes and your receiver layout and pretty much set up everything else from scratch. But we're going to use this tool and what we're going to do is we're going to get the contents of that diff all that we've done. We're going to control C and then control V and then we're going to hit the button in the bottom left hand corner and it's edited out the pieces that are going to be problematic. Now if you don't do this, you will get errors when you upload your diff file. So if you've been trying to upgrade and you've got these kind of errors about IMUs, that is your problem. So I'm going to save these new diff all bits and pieces to a new file and we're ready to flash the flight controller and upload our settings. So again, I've connected to it via configurator version 6. You can see here the model's still on 5.1 and this is the way you can find out the version that's on the model if you've forgotten. Great thing about going into firmware flasher now, it auto detects the flight controller. This makes it so much simpler. We're going to make sure that full chip arrays is on. We're going to make sure that we've selected the version we want, 6.0 as I'm recording this. We're going to load the firmware online. Let me scroll down because I like to see the status bar. We're going to hit flash firmware. And it's just going to work through this. And it's going to take two or three minutes, but that's absolutely fine. Just sit and uh, watch it while you're sipping your tea. Um, not a long, I speeded this little, little bit up. It takes a long time, it's a little bit longer than that. But now we have it, it's gonna reboot and we can connect iNav 6 for the first time on this model. We're gonna to need to tell it what it is. This is a wing because it only has two control surfaces. We only have to do this before we load in everything else. It's going to reboot and then when we come back straight into the CLI, we're going to copy the contents of that new diff 
and paste it into the CLI and hit enter and everything's going to come across and it's not going to have any red errors. Watch it like a hawk in case there are. If you put it through the tool, it should be absolutely fine. But just sit and watch it. I sometimes take the last save command out of the diff all file just to make sure that I've got a chance to review everything. Now, that has gone perfectly. There is one last thing I'll draw your attention to at the bottom, which is about the AHRS stuff, which is mentioned in the fourth step here. That does need to be set for the kind of model that you have. It set it automatically for me. Adaptive is what I want. So that looks fantastic. Not a single issue. So I'm just going to type save and hit enter and it's going to reboot. And when it comes back up, I should be able to look at all the pieces and find that it looks just like my model did on 5.1. So we've come back up. That looks promising. So let's first of all have a quick look at the ports. Interestingly, it's replaced the port uh, UART1, which I had set as HD0 as MSP Display Port, which is right. It's remembered we like return to home as the fail save. Channel order looks right for this particular model. I would go through each of the tabs with hopefully the refresh memory that you had originally, all of this should look very familiar. If it doesn't stop, go back and check that you've not made a mistake with the process. The only thing I'm going to spend a bit of time in is the OSD tab, because that's the big reason I've done this. And I'm going to select the avatar, which is the walk snail system. And now I can drag and drop the pieces into the corner of the HD system so that rather than being in the middle, it's going to be out the way. And as I've done other videos, the fact that it says MSP display port is the peripheral set for the UART that the HD stuff is plugged into. I just could by coming in here and selecting either HD zero, the avatar, the DGR stuff, or the beta flight 4.3 compatibility mode is the one that you want. So before I finish the video, I think it's very worthwhile just taking a moment to talk about this new setting in iNav 6.0, which is the AHRS Inertia Comp Method. I gave a preview of this video to a number of Patreons, and a lot of them had the same question. So this extra little bit has been added in here, and a big thank you to those Patreons who got in touch to ask me to explain it a little bit more. Now, there are actually three settings that are available for AHRS inertia comp method, their VELNED turn rate and adaptive. By default, it's going to be set for VELNED. And if you're using a fixed wing, like I am in my examples, you need to set it to adaptive. So VELNED uses the acceleration from the GPS. Turn rate calculates the acceleration by the turn rate multiplied by the speed. And adaptive kind of chooses the best results for each of those in each AHRS loop. So for fixed wing, make sure you go and set it as adaptive. For all other models, it'll be set as VELNED. It looks like the tool that Mr. D following with style that we've used in this video automatically adds the extra piece in the bottom, identifies the model as a fixed wing type and sets the AHRS inertia comp method to adaptive, which is what it should be. But when you are upgrading, it will pay just to go into the CLI, get the value for this and make sure that if it's fixed wing, it's set to adaptive. For all of the model types, it's set to VELNED. So there you have it. This is now an iNav 6.0 machine set up with the modes, with the offsets, with the bits and pieces in here, thanks to that little tool. Now again, if you don't use that tool and try and upload your diff all from 5.0 or 5.1 into 6.0, you are going to get some errors. So I would strongly recommend use the tool. It's worked incredibly well for me here, and I've upgraded my walk snail fleet to 6.0 so I could have that beautiful widescreen view and get all of the OSD elements right to the very sides out of the way of that beautiful HD image. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that have been looking at this stuff. It is that easy. If you have a HD system, I really wouldn't delay any longer if you put it off upgrading your fleet to INAV6 before you start flying it again. It's definitely worth it. It makes a big difference. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.